What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Arizona Cardinals Madden 19 Rebuild Series. We have a lot of work to do here in this one, don't we? The team might have started out okay, but we're only 2-6 and six halfway through the season. There were some good suggestions in last episode's comment section to look at maybe trading players like Larry Fitzgerald, players who could be retiring soon or no longer have contracts. And that would have been a good idea had I stayed in week 8, but we're in week 9. But I think that I'd still like to try convincing Larry to stay for one more year. He's been a career Cardinal. It's rare to see players stay in one town, one city, their entire career. Larry's been here from the very beginning. And maybe he doesn't retire after this year. Certainly, ability is not an issue. He's very good at his role. And if we can convince him to stay, that might be a better move than trading him, honestly. So, Steve Wilkes is the head coach. We could purchase expert scouting, which is something I always try to get. The other one is the retirement influence that's really expensive. And I'm not sure if it's worth it to save up almost 4,000 XP, or maybe we just hope for the best. I think right now with where this team is at, though, it'd be irresponsible to not get expert scouting as soon as I can so I can scout more to get this team ready for the future. I think I also want to try getting some other players some chances to play a bit more. We're going to give Chad Williams the chance to play number two wide receiver. And we're going to get Chase Edmonds a chance to play number two running back. Edmonds actually an intriguing rookie here out of Fordham. The speed is passable, good acceleration, good agility, elusiveness, spin, juke. I like where those ratings are at. I think that he might offer a bit more upside than Logan, who's really more of a role player. But we'll see if he becomes a good role player. Honestly, though, neither are scheme fits, so I'm not sure if they're the running backs I'm going to stick with from a developmental standpoint, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Defensively, do I want to make any changes? Honestly, I don't see a lot of opportunities here. Maybe I could play someone like Gerald Hodges, but he's a veteran now, and he's probably done developing for the most part. So really, like, we're in major, like talent acquisition mode right now we don't have a lot of players as depth right now that I think have like a big part of our future I'd also like to see them in the free agent menu just give us a tab here for scheme fit only so we can kind of have a shortcut way to see who fits our scheme and can develop faster you know what let's make a move right here it's not a flashy one 69 overall Dion King has adequate speed I like that he has both decent finesse and block shed which suggests that his ceiling is a little bit higher being that versatile I do like that he has the good run defense ratings for the most part we just need someone else that's young and a scheme fit that we can develop at linebacker I know we have Buchanan and Hassan Reddick but I'm looking for someone who can maybe fit better on the inside, and I want to try King there. To make some room, we're going to release Garrison Smith. I know he is a scheme fit, but he is already 26, so probably not someone who's going to be a long-term developmental option. So we'll make that move, and I want to get King onto the field here pretty quickly. It's unfortunate that this team seems like it still fits the 3-4 a lot better than a 4-3. So we're just going to have to try making this work, and we're going to stick with the schemes here of head coach Steve Wilkes. When I have a coach, I want to try sticking to their schemes and not just change it. Kind of add some fun to the series that way. So we have eight games to go, and I really don't think we're going to be playing any more games or watching anymore, unless something pops up that makes me change my mind, but I don't think I want to watch a full game at any rate. Maybe a drive or two if I want to see the defense a little bit and just do some team scouting, I guess. But uh, let's get on with it today. Well, we apparently already need to re-sign Ricky Seals-Jones, and that's a pretty easy choice on my part. And we get a quick three-year deal done, $11.1 million. I think that's very fair, especially for where he should be here in a couple of years. When it comes to Larry Fitzgerald, though, this is a pretty rich deal. 13 million but the thing is we don't have a lot of big money to dish out so if it's two years 
I don't really know if that's much of a concern. So, I'd like to keep Larry if you'll play. How about that? We just put up our season high point total this year of 30. The Kansas City defense, not one of the best in the NFL any longer. Patrick Mahomes, three touchdowns, one pick, and we actually sack him seven times. Rosen, meanwhile, sacked three times, had a, an adequate day, a passable day, it seems. On the ground, DJ, 75 and a touchdown. In the air, Chad Williams, put into the starting role, gets eight catches, 63 yards. Fitzgerald, meanwhile, 78 and a touch. I want to know about those sacks, though. How do we get seven in one game? We got Kimdichie with two, Chandler Jones with two, Corey Peters, Benson Mayoa, and Deion Buchanan. Interception for Trey Boston. So pretty solid all around there. I just wondered if we had like a defensive score or something. Nope, but apparently it was all offense. So good to see us at least take advantage of a poor defense and get our best offensive day of the season. But what can we do the rest of the way here? Man, every time I check this menu, I wonder if it's time to upgrade Josh Rosen, and it still isn't. DJ Humphreys is up first. He's a very important player. He's good in power, good agility, but pass protector is where we have to get the work. Those are important ratings, so I will upgrade it, even though there's not really much hope of this becoming his top archetype. He's just a much better run blocker at this point, and he's actually a quality run blocker. It's just, if he can't become a better pass protector, then it's not really going to matter a whole lot. So DJ Humphreys, plus one pass, plus one, or plus two pass block power. It really isn't much, is it? I guess that's why that these XP sliders from T-Dog have such a boost to offensive linemen. That really wasn't much. Benay Ben Wickery, let's make him a scheme fit right here and a 71 overall. Ben Wickery, plus four press and plus three awareness. Nothing there for his cover ratings. The more I think about it, the more I believe that this draft is going to be one where I want to end up with a bunch of late round selections because I feel that our entire depth needs to be rebuilt. We need to have players there with some scheme fit potential and some upside. And that's really fun because I love to have the chance to go out and draft like, you know, 10 to 15 rookies and develop a pretty young roster. Might take a while to get them where they need to be, but that seems to be the right approach. Wait a minute now, that's back-to-back -back wins, and we put 48 on the board. So we can beat bad defenses. We've learned that now in our last two games. We got Josh Rosen here again, one touchdown, a pretty passable day, nothing great, nothing bad, and no turnovers on his part. Then on the running game, David Johnson, three touchdowns on 2.7 yards per carry. Jared Cook has the big day, so tight end still giving us some problems. Again, good day for Chad Williams, so maybe we can get him developed a little bit. Touchdown there for Larry Fitzgerald. And defensively, Buda Baker, nine tackles, two sacks on the day for Marcus Golden, and picks again Buda Baker and Patrick Peterson. All right, I really don't know where all this is coming from. Is this the Chad Williams effect? 37 points now on the Chargers, and that's a legit defense right there. This is wild. Three touchdowns for Josh Rosen, one of his better games, it looks like, but only 55% completion. Then on the ground, a better day here for David Johnson. Edmonds gets 19 yards on the ground. TJ Logan, 28. Chad Williams, I mean, he's had a good day in all three games he started now. He gets the touchdown this time. Suddenly, our season doesn't look so over. Robert Kimdichie, two sacks. Like, everything is turning around, and it's really making the rest of this season look interesting. Look at all these games. Can't score more than 17 points, and suddenly now, probably like the top offense over the past three weeks. But can we beat the Packers? I don't know how this is happening. The Cardinals just won their fourth game in a row. From two and six, to six and six. Rosen, three touchdowns here as we beat Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. We didn't pass for a lot of yards, but we ran for a ton. 168 here with DJ, that's what I wanna see. Devontae Adams though has a big day, so does Randall Cobb. So we're not playing the best of defense in these games and we're still winning with offense. That's really exciting and encouraging for the future. 
We got a pick here for Patrick Peterson. The Cardinals are above 500. We are now 7 and 6 suddenly. I thought we were destined for like a 3 and 13, 4 and 12 season. And yet here we are now trying to get back into the playoff race. Defense plays lights out here against the Lions as we didn't get many points on the board this time but only allowed 7. Chad Williams still doing big things for this offense, continuing to be our leading receiver. And then, you know, we gave up some sacks in this game, didn't play our best, but we're still getting it done. This is incredible. So right now, we are 7-6, and six, which is third place here in the NFC West, and we play the Rams and Seahawks still this season. So when it comes to playoff spots, it looks like in the south, we have the Saints and Falcons, one of those teams who get a wild card spot, but also Carolina's up there. Like, we're not completely in the clear yet when it comes to the playoff race. There are still a lot of teams ahead of us, but we're in the mix. Trey Boston is a good safety, and we're going to keep him in Arizona for four years. He's almost an 85 overall, and he's only 26 years old. No reason to let a player like him walk. When it comes to Larry Fitzgerald, I'm going to try to wait until the end, because I don't know if Madden will do this, but if I give him a signing bonus now, and then he retires, I don't think I get that money back, and I'm not going to take any chances there. I think if I offer this baseline deal in the offseason, he will accept. Maybe I'll go a little bit more if he doesn't retire. I'd be okay with that. And remember for David Johnson, I'm probably going to just franchise tag him and then alter his contract because I edited it already, but he's still in this list, so I'm not sure what the game is really going to do. I know I did this last year with Akeem Hicks, and it didn't turn out into a big deal, so hopefully we're good to go there. Six straight wins. How is this even possible? Josh Rosen, two touchdowns. He's sacked four times. What I've liked this year with Rosen, though, is that he has so few turnovers. That's amazing to me. David Johnson, 75 yards and a touchdown. In the receiving game, big day for Julio Jones. And then a long touchdown, it looks like, for J.J. Nelson. Where's Chad Williams? Only three catches today. Buda Baker continues to stuff the stat sheet. He gets another sack. Corey Peters gets a couple. And then Rodney Gunter as well. Zach Moore. This is unlike anything we saw in the Browns rebuild. I know we saw the team have some really good second halves. But to go from 2-6 and six to a playoff team maybe? That is pretty special. We have the Rams and Seahawks now to close the season. This is the only kind of thing that I could think of that would make us actually watch more games. So we're going to have to at least watch this Rams game next episode. We have the number 30 offense, but a lot of that is probably because of what happened in the first half of the year. And now we have the number 7 defense suddenly. 8-6 and six on the season. 23 touchdowns, 8 interceptions here for Josh Rosen. He's been sacked 38 times. The completion percentage is pretty low, but it looks like he's getting the job done out there. David Johnson, 1,265 yards, 7 touchdowns. Very good numbers for him. In the air, Larry Fitzgerald, 784 and 7. Ricky Seals-Jones, his production has slowed down, but he has 7 touchdowns. And then Chad Williams, maybe a quality wide receiver too for the future. We'll see. He's in his second season here out of Grambling State. With one more upgrade, he should be a uh, scheme fit here with a deep threat. He's not a very polished route runner, but everything else seems to be in a pretty good spot, so we'll have to work on that. Suddenly, this team is going places, though. Defensively, who has all the sacks? Seven and a half for Marcus Golden, that leads the team. Chandler Jones has six. Four for Buda Baker to go with his three interceptions and his 80-plus tackles. So Baker, arrow pointing up in a big way in his game. Ooh, that's not good, though. 65% here on Phil Dawson. What's the uh, NFL look like right now from a field goal standpoint? 65%. All right, should be way down the list here. Most kickers are not struggling like that. But field goal tries overall are way down from what they should be here. We're at $36.7 million in funds after handing out the Trey Boston signing bonus, so we're not too bad there. 
I like to keep around like 15, 20 though for the off season when we can maybe go after some offensive line help or something like that. So we have two games to go this year. We're going to watch this Rams one. That's going to be a big game. And we have some upgrading to do to end this episode. We'll start here with Trey Boston into zone coverage. And we get boosts here to pursuit, tackle, and zone. So that's all great. Marcus Golden is up next. And our scheme fit here is speed rusher. But that addresses like finesse move. I feel like if I put points here into speed rusher, that's not really going to do enough for his development. It's just going to get him closer to being a scheme fit. So Golden is one of those players I think I'll have to go in a different direction with and just play him to his strengths over scheme fit. So Golden gets a boost to power move, tackle, play rack, hit power, which makes his power rushing move now 79. See, there's no hope of getting finesse move up to a good spot. So we're going to use his strengths. So I thought that now would also be a good time to go through our draft board a little bit here and see what I have found for players I like. There are more players on my draft board right now than we typically see, so a lot of options out there. And offensive line is definitely one of the primary areas that I've been looking at. There are a number of tackles who can help us out in the pass blocking department, so I think we'll have plenty of options. And some of them come in the mid rounds, so we don't have to necessarily go early at that spot. It's not where the strength of this class is. And as we continue to win, the less likely it becomes that we can take a player like, say, Zach Meadows, who's probably really high dev, 21 years old, like perfect tackle or offensive line option here in the first round. But he might not be there for us any longer. Depends if we go to the playoffs or not. We'll just stick with offense here. There are a number of intriguing receiver options, and one that I want to target late in this draft is Will Wade from Florida A&M. Good short route runner, really good medium route running. You gotta have these possession receivers. So this would give us a great replacement for Larry Fitzgerald. I know we have Christian Kirk, but we need more than one possession receiver. So that'd be a great fit. And there are also many deep threats here that could help us out if we don't keep J.J. Nelson, which I'm kind of leaning towards not doing so. Nelson, I feel, would not be able to really pay off the investment in his contract. So giving him a second deal doesn't really make sense to me. For backup quarterback options, there are a couple scheme fits here. Alexander Fladell is my favorite with his good throw power and the short accuracy. Definitely a developmental option, but then Clay Shockey. I will sometimes break the mold here for our scheme fit to find a superior talent, and maybe Shockey is a guy that we go after because throw power is adequate, short accuracy is good, maybe he's not good at anything else in terms of throwing, but I mean that's a good place to start and be a backup. I only have two running backs here on the board and one to keep an eye on late in the draft is going to be Darion Butler. He's another receiving back, good carrying, ball carrier vision, and juke move. I just want to find a good running back here that we can kind of develop behind David Johnson. Going to the defensive side of things, I think defensive tackle is definitely something to address. We're rated a B- minus at defensive tackle right now. And for us to fit this scheme a little bit better, I'd like to get some more talented defensive tackle play. I feel that if we go after someone like Tyron Todd, that'd be a good move with the high block shed there at 21 years old. But also versatile players such as the Sean Mays are hard to pass up when you get both pass rush and the ability to stop the run. Most of the pass rushers I've found so far are finesse rushers. Eric Harrington, one of the better ones here, a fourth rounder. I'm finding a lot of good value here, so hopefully it is a draft where we can get a lot of picks in the mid-rounds. A middle linebacker, I think a traditional middle linebacker would also be a, a big need for this defense. I don't see Hassan Reddick or Deion Buchanan filling that role, and then Buchanan's a free agent after this year. So I think that if we could just get someone like Richard Sanford here, who's a field general scheme fit, this would be what this scheme is looking for. Steve Wilkes came over from Carolina, and that scheme is here. So we're trying to find someone in the mold of Luke Keekley, and no one on this team fits that mold. And not from a, a caliber standpoint, from just a, an overall skill set, where Keekley is a do-it-all linebacker. We need one of those. Even if he's not elite like Luke, we just got to start somewhere. 
cornerback is somewhere I still have to invest more points into. We'll finish off the scouting here. It's a zone scheme, so we're going to have to find a lot of players who can fit that single high safety type of defense. Overall, really excited to get to our first draft in this series, but it's not going to be coming as early as I thought because next episode is going to be a big game. Cardinals and Rams, as we put our win streak on the line. It's currently at six games. After our bye week, everything changed for this team. We're no longer an NFC West bottom feeder. We have a chance to go to the postseason. So, hope you're excited for next episode, everybody. That's going to do it for today. I certainly bet you didn't see this coming. I know I didn't. This is really, really weird. But hey, that's what makes these rebuilds fun. Not knowing what's going to happen and then being surprised. Thanks for watching, everybody. That'll do it for this episode. Please smash that like button. Leave your feedback below. What do you think about this incredible turnaround for the Cardinals? Do you think we can actually go to the postseason? I'll see you all next episode. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out. Check out the Marquise Walker quarterback series on the channel, and I'll see you again soon. Have a great day, everybody.